It's hard to accurately describe just how fucking great Waltz of Bashir is. Like Waking Life in Tower, it's an animated movie that's impossible to pin down. Parts of it are a documentary, parts are a war thriller, parts are a drama, and then most parts just make you trip total balls. It's gonna be a tricky one to review because it's sort of impossible to describe, but it's also somehow still really underrated and not talked about much. Even though it's easily one of the best flicks of the last couple decades, I only missed my top 130 list because even I've undervalued it this whole time. The flick opens with one of the creepiest and best credit sequences ever, as a character describes his recurring nightmare to the film director, Ari Folman. <laughs> Both are Israeli war vets from the Lebanon War, and both have clearly decided to put that shit as far back in the holes of their memories as possible. But on the way home, Fullman has his first flashback, a really haunting vision of waking up in an ocean that is a perfect combo of visuals and music, so much so that the movie repeats this frame scene like three more times. Fulman realizes he's got amnesia about the war, specifically the infamous massacre of Sabra and Shatila. Shatila? Shatila? I don't know how to pronounce it. Anyway, so he goes interviewing all the survivors he knows to figure out what happened. In terms of the present day stuff, that's about it for the plot. We see Fulman ask questions, interview, and hunt down for answers that he's likely never gonna get, and if he does, they'll probably just bum him right the hell out. It's in all the flashbacks and memories and stories that this flick really comes alive. Just in terms of what actually happens, every scene sticks out as a memorable individual moment. There's the tense action scene where a dude's tank is attacked and he has to hide until nightfall to swim to safety. Then there's a scene where a kid dreams of fucking a massive naked mermaid. And then there's a surprisingly beautiful slow-mo classical music scene of the army running into a kid with an RPG. All these scenes and more linger in your brain for a long time after watching the flick, which is I guess typical of a lot of great war movies, and yet how often do you hear Waltz of Bashir mentioned alongside stuff like Platoon or Saving Private Ryan? The simple fact that it's animated turns off most war movie lovers because, I think, they'll assume it'll be less violent or less disturbing or somehow less real as a cartoon. But especially in the way that it's animated, which looks rotoscope but apparently isn't, makes you completely stop treating it as an animated flick within minutes. It's all about memories fading or truths being obscured, and I think presenting it in this dreamlike way adds to the tone and themes of the film rather than taking away. But I'm worried I'm making this movie sound like fucking homework when it really isn't. 
I didn't know much about the Lebanon War before, and I still don't. It's all seen purely from the viewpoint of the teenagers sent off to war thinking they'll do good and realizing their old age that they might not have. There's little politics and barely any large view stuff because they didn't care about it either, they just wanted to do their duty. As Fulman gains more and more insight, he starts going into how the massacre happened. Almost everyone involved isn't sure. No one takes blame or accountability. It was all someone else doing something somewhere. They were confused and just following orders. יש מסעיות, אה, נכנסות ריקות, יוצאות תחוסות, יש ילדים ונשים יוצאים מהמחנה, יש דחפור שנכנס, ואז אתה אומר, יש פה טבח? יש דבר כזה שאתה אומר, בואנה, איך לא חשבתי על זה קודם? כן, יש שלב כזה, ודאי. <coughs> אבל השלב הזה, השלב הזה אבל מגיע אה, רק ברגע שהחיילים שלי אומרים ראינו. The more we slowly get filled in on the massacre, the more shocking and depressing the movie becomes, until a final scene suddenly switches from animation and becomes just about the most heartbreaking war movie scene that's ever existed. The ending is also really interesting just because it is the definition of sobering. Because the whole movie is so trippy and visually creative and then suddenly, boom, the real world smacks you right in the face with a hammer. Walsh's Bashir is an overlooked gem of a movie. Some parts move a little slow and the ending does arrive with almost no personal closure, but overall, this is about as original, daring, and stunning as movies can get these days. I give it a huge 4.5 fries out of 5 and really hope you can go check her out.